welcome everybody to this video on the orchid lingo word of the day deficiencies and keeping us company during footage that i have and do not have is our beautiful volnara tldc fan thursday so the subject can be quite extensive, but I would like to break it down into the most common deficiencies that we would find in our orchids. When leaves turn yellow or brown, they're often misdiagnosed as sunburn, overwatering, or fungal bacteria infection. When bottom leaves drop, the problem is often ignored and is considered natural shedding. This is not to exclude that disease can be a cause of nutritional deficiency, but most likely the root cause that makes an orchid become more vulnerable to fungal bacteria Bacterial diseases and rotting simply by removing the yellow leaf would not solve the deep rooted problem. And we are coming into the time of year for us in the Northern Hemisphere where nutritional deficiency often manifests itself in spring and summer during the active growth phase when orchids need to be fed larger quantities of nutrients throughout the entire growth period so that they can grow out their leaves and structures and hopefully later on bloom. So in this video, I'm going to go through the four most common nutritional deficiencies and what it would look like in orchids, complete with pictures to help you diagnose the health of your orchid. It is often believed that plants need large quantities of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That would be the NPK that you see mainly as numbers on your fertilizer. And the truth is that orchids actually need large quantities of calcium, magnesium, followed by phosphorus and potassium. So you see that calcium and magnesium are a little bit more relevant when it comes to growing orchids as opposed to regular houseplants. Turns out then that the orchids are most likely to be deficient in calcium and magnesium, followed by potassium and then nitrogen. When it comes to deficiencies of micronutrients, that is very rare that they would be so deficient to such an extent that they will cause significant health issues such as yellow leaves or leaf drop because they contribute to a small part of the leaves. That's why I'm just going to focus on the major symptoms, signs and the deficiencies that would be in our orchids more commonly and that would be the deficiency of nitrogen, magnesium, calcium and potassium. Let me back that up a little bit and let's get an understanding of nutrient deficiency in plants. We also need to understand that some nutrients are mobile. So on the chart here, you can see that on the left, I have separated the mobile nutrients and on the right, the immobile nutrients. And this is important. Mobile nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, molybdenum and chlorine, for example, they can be shifted around the plant as and when needed. When it comes to the immobile nutrients, calcium, sulfur, boron, iron, manganese, copper and zinc, once they are absorbed and they're placed in the plant, that is where they stay. They cannot then be moved around to other areas of the orchid if the orchid didn't have enough of those nutrients so that they could move them elsewhere. The immobile nutrients, once absorbed, stay in place. So you can see on the bottom of the mobile nutrients, old growths would show deficiency if lacking any of these nutrients because the new growths on any orchid are the most important for the survival of the orchid and nature just so has it that it would mobilize all the mobile nutrients if there was a deficiency in the fertilizing regime towards the new growths removing those nutrients from the old growth to support the growth of the new growths. Well, you can see that the immobile nutrients, new growths would show deficiency if lacking in these. So if you want to screenshot the chart, at least you've got a breakdown of why old growths are starting to look a little bit weird, as opposed to why new growths are starting to look a little bit weird. Not to be mistaken with the natural process of orchids shedding leaves or pseudobulbs if they are old and have done their job. In general, deficiency symptoms manifest as chlorosis, which is like a yellowing of leaves due to a loss or disruption in the production of chlorophyll. It can appear on the edges of a new or old leaf or between the veins as a mosaic pattern with visible green veins. Not only that, in general, deficiency symptoms can also manifest as necrosis, which is cellular death, causing tissue to turn dry, brown, or black. They often affect the leaf margins, but can spread. It can cause eventual leaf drop or bud blast. 
So here's another chart with the four deficiencies where I've written it out in a breakdown format. So we've got calcium, magnesium, nitrogen, and potassium on the top. And then to the left, I've got symptoms where you can see yellow mosaic pattern, the chlorosis between veins or margins. And then you can see that that would happen with a magnesium deficiency on old growths, magnesium being a mobile nutrient, and nitrogen deficiency on old growths nitrogen being a mobile nutrient, old growths being used as a reserve for what the new growth needs. When it comes to calcium deficiency or potassium deficiency, you can see symptoms of dry black rot in tips and margins, especially with calcium deficiency on new growths. A potassium deficiency would show up on old growths because once again, potassium is a mobile nutrient and the orchid would draw from those energy reserves and move it to the new growth. A magnesium deficiency of dry, like black rot, necrosis between the veins or the margins will show up on old growths, magnesium being a mobile nutrient. Leaf drop and bud blast only in very, very severe cases if we don't address the issue. Calcium being an immobile nutrient, the new growths would be affected because the orchid has nothing to draw from. There is no calcium being absorbed. Magnesium would show in the old growth, again, magnesium being a mobile nutrient. Potassium, mobile nutrient, deficiency would show in old growths. But this is in very, very severe cases if the problem hasn't been addressed previously. And I'm hoping this video will help you diagnose what you're looking at. So based on what I've just mentioned, when problems are noticeable within new growth, it's often a calcium deficiency. Once again, this is because amongst the immobile nutrients that can cause problems with new growth, calcium and sulfur are the only macronutrients which are needed in large quantities, large being relative. Okay, we're just focusing on the deficiencies. Quantities, I did a recipe video on that, which I will link in the description and I'll put up a card. So let's talk about calcium deficiency while we're on the subject. The symptoms are that the damage of the new growth is commonly known as dieback. The tissue at the very tip or margin of a new leaf becomes dry and black due to necrosis. There's a very sharp differential demarcation between the dead and the living tissue, and it can progress slowly down the leaf. Of course, based on this, sometimes the dead part of the leaf can suffer from a secondary infection by a fungus that feasts on dead tissue. This would then create a yellow band or a wash affecting the living tissue next to the dead tissue. So severe deficiency of calcium can cause leaf drop and bud blast. The black rot on leaf tips is due to an accumulation of salts or nutrient minerals on the leaf tips. The accumulation of salts is not only caused by overfertilization, but most commonly a deficiency of calcium. Calcium is crucial in making new cells and cell walls. So when spring comes with warmer temperature and longer daylight, orchids enter a growth phase, yay, when they need a lot of calcium to build new cell walls and to put out new growths, including roots, possible flower spikes, and buds. But once again, calcium being an immobile nutrient cannot be pulled from the reserves stored in the other parts of the orchid. It needs to be given from an external source in the form of fertilizer. And with a calcium deficiency that is not corrected, growths are stunted. At every point of an orchid that is starting a new growth, nutrients are being pumped into that new growth to a point of sometimes five times more nutrients are going to the growing tip than other parts of the plant. And if there is not enough new growth due to a calcium deficiency or too many nutrients would be accumulated at the delicate growing tips, causing fertilizer burn or dieback, and then black rot sets in. So the solution to this is unfortunate, but the dead part of the leaf should be cut off using sterilized pruners as the dead tissue can lead to secondary infection by fungi spreading to other parts of the plant. In the meantime, we must correct the calcium deficiency by supplementing the orchid with either a CalMag solution or calcium nitrate. Again, I will refer to the recipe video I have already posted if you need some help and just a little bit of guidance as to quantities, pH, and how often. Now, if you have been fertilizing your orchids and supplementing and still notice the deficiency symptoms, bear in mind the calcium and magnesium content may be quite low, 
and maybe should be addressed and upped in quantity. Also, if you've been doing all that and your quantity levels are fine because we don't want to over fertilize and cause any salt buildup in our pots, pay attention to the pH of the medium or if you're in inorganic media, make sure that you pH in the right range of 6.5 to 7. That is the optimal range of absorption for calcium and magnesium together. Even if you were to just supplement with some calcium Calcium nitrate 6.5 to 7 is ideal for the correct absorption rate for calcium. Know that organic media can be broken down, so you may be pHing quite all right, but the climate, the acidity in the pot drops the pH to a level where the calcium and the magnesium cannot be absorbed. Just as a summary, if you're doing everything correct and your levels are fine and you're still getting symptoms, check your pH for your growing method. So orchids with magnesium deficiency develop a mosaic like a speckled pattern called chlorosis on the older leaves. Again, magnesium is mobile and will be drawn from the older parts of the plant moved to the new growth. It can be in patches of green yellow or visible green veins, extreme cases in a discolored leaf. Now, when it comes to orchids with purple or red flowers, chlorosis will display purple pigmentation. Bear in mind, magnesium deficiency can also lead to cellular death or black rot between the veins or on the leaf edges. And then again, severe deficiency can lead to leaf drop and bud blasts. So what you see when you see symptoms of a magnesium deficiency is that amongst other functions, such as maintaining strong cells, magnesium is there for chlorophyll production. And when it runs out, when there is not enough magnesium around, chlorophyll will be disrupted, resulting in a very mottled appearance and magnesium is pulled from older structures such as a bottom leaf or pseudobulbs in the back moving that to the new growth as they have priority just the same with the calcium deficiency for example if you were to do a calmag solution you can supplement that you can up the parts per million if it is a deficiency you have to increase the application and you also have to make sure that your ph is within the right range for absorption no matter the media that you're growing in 6.5 and 7.0 ensures a high rate of absorption within that pH range. You can also do a blitz soak with Epsom salts, just focusing on magnesium uptake exclusively if you see that the problem is more on the magnesium side and not so much on the calcium side. Know that these corrections can take time, it doesn't happen overnight. Nitrogen is also a mobile nutrient and the deficiency often occurs in one or two of the older leaves with yellow between veins or the edges again looking like a mosaic chlorosis and this once again happens during the active development of the leaves and the new growth the damage caused by nitrogen deficiency affects the leaf tips and extremities causing them to curl and it can eventually stunt growth but thankfully, unlike magnesium deficiency, nitrogen deficiency does not cause black rot, nor does the leaf drop because of it. Make sure that you are correctly pHing your fertilizer solution and make sure that your fertilizer has a nitrate-based nitrogen in it. And the optimal pH range is about 5.8 to 6.7. Check your media and make sure that whatever you are pHing your solution at when it goes into the pot, your media isn't breaking down. And after a while, this is quite a quick correction of a deficiency. The yellow leaves can become greener. They may never return to what they used to be. Bear in mind also, if the damage is severe, it would not be reversible. So I'm hoping that this video is actually helping to be able to break down what you are looking at and how to react so that we don't incur any damage that we cannot reverse. So when it comes to potassium deficiency, that causes cellular death on leaf tips and margins and will become dry, brown or black. And severe potassium depletion can cause leaf drop and bud blast. But again, we're talking severe. What I'm trying to do here is point you in the direction of what you're looking at so nothing ever gets severe. More often than not, a potassium deficiency will show itself during the blooming phase of an orchid when large quantities of potassium are needed. Before that, it's actually more the magnesium part that we are always addressing because potassium deficiencies look similar to magnesium magnesium deficiencies, but as opposed to magnesium deficiency that we can easily identify, 
If a potassium deficiency manifests itself, we talk again about leaf tips and margins that will become dry or brownish blackish. We would be then thinking, okay, that could be calcium. So we apply calcium. And that is why NPK, the K, the potassium is important in your fertilizer. As long as your pH that goes into your media, into your pot is to the point of 5.8 to 6.7, and that is what is in the pot, then you should be absolutely fine because potassium deficiency usually only occurs when an orchid is already so stressed out and then is trying to bloom its heart out because the blooms guarantee its survival because they're looking to be pollinated and create seeds. But if we have a very healthy orchid when we are pHing correctly and putting in, let's say, the NPK fertilizer at the levels that the fertilizer provides, Potassium deficiency doesn't happen as often. And there's also the correlation with the magnesium deficiency, the two looking so similar, except potassium would show blackening of leaf tips. Magnesium would not show blackening of leaf tips. Magnesium would show maybe cell structures starting to collapse within themselves because the chlorophyll is dying off. But the two are mobile nutrients, so the deficiency would appear on the older leaves. Your orchid will still bloom, but any potassium deficiency would show up on older leaves. Now, just a little side note here, which I want to make sure that I address because nutritional deficiency and bacterial infection have very similar symptoms. Yellowing of leaves in a mosaic pattern, leading to brown or black spots, black tips and edges, and eventual leaf drop. Everything seems to somehow bleed into each other and look very similar, but the difference is that the damage caused by nutritional deficiency is regular and symmetrical. So you would get a mottled pattern like a halo, brown spots evenly distributed, but the damage of a bacterial infection looks random. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage or images of a bacterial infection at my disposition. So if you can imagine something looking regular and evenly distributed, symmetrical, as opposed to a bacterial infection looking random, old leaves would show deficiencies, whereas a bacterial infection would show up all over the orchid, be it new structures, new leaves, as well as old leaves. So I hope that that helps differentiate the two. So let's address what we could also consider a neutral deficiency or a sunburn. I know that this sounds very random, but a lot of people have misdiagnosed the yellowing of leaves. And there's three ways to tell whether the orchid is suffering from sunburn or nutritional deficiency. First of all, sunburn causes a discoloring, a whitening of the orchid leaves, and it happens in large patches, not just a few spots and not an entire leaf. In contrast, orchids suffering from a deficiency become yellow and often have a mottled pattern. And secondly, sunburn affects top leaves that are closer to the sun rather than the bottom ones that are shielded from the other leaves. And if one leaf suffers from sunburn, it's possible in some orchids the neighboring leaf is often affected as well. So if we were to see something yellowing or going white on top leaves, that is a sunburn because if there was a deficiency, it would be the bottom leaves that would show those deficiencies before even a sunburn would kick in. So also make sure that you separate nutritional deficiency as a symptom of overwatering or underwatering. Too much water often leads to root rot, either stem rot or crown rot, and those are major immediate causes for orchids losing leaves, not a deficiency. So if your orchid has a lot of healthy roots and is growing new roots, the media is not breaking down. Overwatering is not something you should diagnose when you look at a nutritional deficiency. To sum it up, and I hope that I haven't lost you by now, and I hope that this is interesting, a mineral nutritional deficiency in orchids can cause yellowing of leaves, often in a mosaic or a halo pattern, sometimes with visible veins, which is chlorosis. It can also result in cellular death with dry black tips and margins, be necrosis, and these symptoms can manifest in new growth as dieback, often due to calcium deficiency or in old growth due to the deficiency of magnesium, nitrogen, and potassium. Do not confuse nutrient deficiency with sunburn, overwatering, and fungal bacteria infections as the cause of leaf yellowing. And if an orchid is well nourished, the older leaves would not always shed. It would have thick cell walls that are more resistant to fungal and bacterial infections and pest attacks. So 
Next time when you see a leaf turning yellow or brown, don't immediately spray it with a fungicide or a pesticide. It could just be a nutritional problem. And then I hope that the recipes in my previous video and the little side notes I've put in this video will be of help in correcting whatever deficiency you may be diagnosing. These kinds of videos are not always that hands-on and it's a little bit difficult to make them super interesting, but I hope I, I manage to make it understandable, if even not very interesting, <laughs> at least understandable as we here in the Northern Hemisphere are going to be moving into spring, summer, and we really want to see great new growths coming and then be rewarded with beautiful blooms. So bringing out a video like this, I hope that you are armed and ready with all the information you need to be able to identify what you're looking at and intervene and correct sooner rather than later. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. The comments are there for a reason. I welcome the dialogue. And I also appreciate very, very much that you watched. If you watched to the end, thank you so, so much. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.